You're watching From the Heart with John Willard. Hi friends, John Willard here. Great show today about inseparable bonds. And remember, the subscribe button below for CNA TV. My opening thought, a friend is the first one to walk in when the world walks out. Nearly 100 years before Freud or Tennessee Williams might have raised your eyebrow, John and Bob were inseparable. From the day they met, they enjoyed each other's company so much that they ate from the same table, lived in the same house, slept in the same room. In public, they were never apart. In the privacy of their home, they greeted guests together. They were inseparable. I don't know how you feel about this so far, but try to put yourself in Bob's place when John died. Hmm. Theirs had been a constant companionship, shared by few people on earth. Few brothers, few husbands and wives. Now, it was over. A poet said of death, now, at last, for the first time, you have given me pain. And so, for Bob. John Gray was buried in the churchyard, Edinburgh, on a dismal spring morning in 1858. Throughout his illness, Bob had never left his side. Afterward, at the funeral, Bob wept unashamedly. He watched wet-eyed and heartbroken as his friend was lowered into the ground. When the ritual was finished, the minister and the attendants slowly left the churchyard leaving Bob to his quiet grief. The story would have ended there had Bob's courage been greater or his sorrow less. Instead, acquaintances passing the churchyard later that evening saw Bob still at the graveside, head bowed, silent, remembering the kind attention that John and Bob had shown them. Come home with us, they said. And Bob went home with them, but he wouldn't stay. Next morning, it was apparent his bed had not been slept in. Bob had gone back to the grave of his friend. Many times he was gently urged from the churchyard, as many times he returned to mourn. It was for his own good that he leave, they said, but the reasoning was useless. Bob never again saw the house that he shared with John. Each day, Bob maintained his graveside vigil and eventually, official permission to stay was given to Bob. In all Edinburgh, this was an unprecedented display of grief and the curious citizens frequently passed by to watch. 
The neighborhood children? Impressed. Sometimes they brought food and drink. Bob, though grateful, remained. And in clement weather, a woman might bring him a shawl and a kind word or two. Once a baroness was so deeply touched that she commissioned a bronze medal for him to wear. But Bob stayed and everyone understood. For 14 years, Bob quietly kept his daily vigil. Then, one cold January morning, in 1872, he was found at the graveside, still and lifeless, his visage filled with a strange contentment. Bob was buried nearby. To keep company in death, the man he would not abandon in life. Today, in front of Candlemakers Hall in Edinburgh, there is a fountain dedicated to the memory of Bob. His friend, John Gray, who otherwise would have been forgotten, is remembered also because of Bob. A little ruffle-coated Sky Terrier he loved him so much. Wow, what an inseparable bond. You too are being guided and protected on your journey. The task of your teachers is not to take you anywhere, but to help you pay attention to where you are. I sit with my dogs in my lap and marvel at nature's exquisite way of saying good morning. I think to myself it will always be like this here in the Ozarks. The same trees will send shadows across the lawn. The same moon will rise, painting the valley silver with its light. Life is now in session. My dog shifts on my lap to get a better view. I remember to stop, sit back, and witness the glorious spectacle of creation to receive the privilege and blessing of being alive, to be fully present right here, right now, to love, to be grateful, to celebrate life moment by moment. I hope I have enriched your journey. Many things will catch your eye, but only a few will catch your heart. Pursue those. You can reach me on Twitter at John Willard 47 this is John Willard from the farm.